Hey folks, Nephilim Free here. Uh, you know, people who uh, defend evolution theory and uh, this Big Bang idea and uh, say it's all naturalism and creation is false and blah blah blah, materialism is true. You know, they invented dark matter a long time ago to plug the holes in their early Big Bang theories and they've been applying it as a fixer, a filler to all the holes in all their secular theories ever since, you know, to try to argue away from creation. But it just gets more funny you know, all the time. I've said many times before. Stop! How much stupid was that? I usually have to edit Neff's clips to keep the stupid bombs dropping like that. This was completely unedited. Okay, let's let's watch this again with a timer and a stupid count running. Hey folks, Nephilim Free here. I guess I should have seen that one coming. <sighs> okay, an error countdown. Hey folks, Nephilim Free here. Uh, you know, people who uh, defend evolution theory and uh, this Big Bang idea and uh, say it's all naturalism and creation is false and blah blah blah, materialism is true. You know, they invented dark matter a long time ago to plug the holes in their early Big Bang theories, and they've been applying it as a fixer, a filler to all the holes in all their secular theories ever since, you know, to try to argue away from creation. Squeezing six factual errors into the first 30 seconds of your video is pretty impressive, even by your standards, Neff. So, for those who didn't have time to read the comments, or pause the video to read them. Here's the play-by-play -play analysis. Neff says that dark matter was invented by people who defend evolution and the Big Bang Theory to fix problems with the latter. That's not true. The people behind the theory were astronomers, not biologists. And they weren't trying to defend the Big Bang Theory either, because at the time, that hadn't yet become generally accepted. They were not trying to refute creationism. They were trying to explain the observation that galaxies behave as if they have much more mass than what can be directly observed. They say that the universe, the solar system in our universe, should be chock full of dark matter. No, Naf, the sun's neighborhood does not refer to just the solar system, but it doesn't refer to the universe either. It refers to a region of about 400 stars that were studied in this particular study. That's a tiny portion of our galaxy which contains between 100 billion and 400 billion stars. The galaxy, in turn, is just one of hundreds of billions of galaxies in the observable universe. Now, watch this. This is our solar system. This is a region of about 400 stars. This is our galaxy, the Milky Way. Now let's zoom out even more. All these dots you see here are galaxies. This is the entire observable universe. Let's go over this again. Solar system, 400 stars, galaxy, universe. One more time. Solar system, 400 stars, galaxy, universe, stupid person. According to widely held theories, the solar uh, neighborhood was expected to be filled with dark matter. But a new study uh, by a team of astronomers in Chile has found that these theories do not fit the observable facts. Yep. The study shows that there's no dark matter, or at least no significant amount of dark matter, in this region. That's science, right? What is observable, testable, repeatable? That's science. Correct. It's a scientific discovery that there's no dark matter around here. Fantasies about what coulda, shoulda, woulda, if you don't find any evidence for it, is not science, you see. That's not necessarily true. Uh, testable hypothesis that hasn't been tested yet is still scientific. Also, thanks for acknowledging that creationism is not scientific.
If you don't find the evidence for the coulda, woulda, shoulda, you discard it and start a new hypothesis to form a theory. That's how science is supposed to work. Okay, what you just said here implies that if I were to come up with a hypothesis, I have to discard it immediately because I have no evidence to support it. Of course I don't. I haven't tested it yet. Lack of evidence is a reason not to accept a hypothesis as true. It's also a good reason to keep looking for evidence. Lack of evidence means we don't know yet. And that we need to find out. That's science, Neff. A hypothesis is abandoned when it's falsified. A theory is abandoned when another theory, which better fits the available facts, contradicts it. We say it's there, and that's what fixes the problem, and that's the way it is. That's science to these people, you see? What? They don't just say it's there, they conclude that it's probably there. Galaxies appear to have a bunch of extra mass. They rotate as if they do, they affect each other as if they do, and they bend light as if they do. They appear to have a bunch of extra mass. So far, the best explanation available is, and try to follow the logic on this one, they have a bunch of extra mass. The amount of mass that we derive matches very well with what we see. Stars, dust, and gas in the region around the sun. In other words, the matter that we see is what seems to be there, nothing more. That's right, in the region studied. Dark matter doesn't even exist, folks. There's no evidence that could lead to that conclusion at this time. Look, not finding God under my bed doesn't mean he can't exist somewhere else, right, Neff? In the same manner, not finding dark matter in this particular region doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It means that if it exists, it's somewhere else. It's something they invented to try to fill a hole in their theories which do not work. The Big Bang Theory, it does not work. The, the accretion disk theory for the formation of the uh, solar system does not work. Yes, they do. And they don't rely on dark matter existing. It could be argued that they indirectly rely on the observed phenomenon that dark matter explains, but that phenomenon, the gravitational anomalies at galactic scales, exists whether dark matter is the correct explanation for it or not. Now Neff goes on to tell us about other articles that say the same thing as this one, and he gets pretty damn repetitive, so I'll skip ahead to where he goes completely bananas. Simply the dark side of the universe. Yeah, the dark side. Welcome to the dark side, Luke Skywalker. Welcome to the dark side. <sighs> And the next time an, an evolutionist tells you dark matter explains things that are, uh, you know, why galaxy, why the accretion disk, or explains the, uh, you know, was flat instead of a, a sphere. Are you saying that evolutionists think pizza is made using dark matter? You know, when they spin a pizza dough to flatten it and make it nice and round, that's the same phenomenon. It's called centrifugal force, and it has nothing to do with dark matter. Where's the evidence, the physical evidence for dark matter? If they tell you gravitational lensing, gravitational lensing, because we can point a laser to, or a light beam towards a galaxy, and it bends as it hits in. That means but the dark matter's pointing in. No, that means the gravity of the galaxy is pulling it. Do you not realize that there's a connection between the mass of the galaxy and the angle of deflection? The greater the mass, the greater the angle. There's a reason why scientists use math all the time, Neff. You can't do science without it, especially not physics. The math tells us that in every galaxy there are trillions of solar masses missing. This can't simply be a bunch of asteroids or planets, brown dwarfs, or even black holes. There's simply too much of it. We would be able to see other indications of these objects 
if there were that many of them, and we don't. And uh, look, we don't point lasers at distant galaxies, we look at the light coming from them. Pointing a laser at something millions or even billions of light years away isn't going to be very productive. Now if you end your video with another rant about how secular science invents things, which does harm to science, what you don't seem to understand is that in order to test an idea, you first have to come up with it. You know, invent it, to use your words. You seem to think that science is this unchanging, dogmatic worldview, just like your religion. It's not. Coming up with new ideas doesn't harm science, it advances it. Yeah, even if it turns out that the idea is wrong. Learning that you're wrong still means that you've learned something. If no new ideas were added, science would stop. And we would learn nothing. But I guess that's what you creationists want, right? 